what it seems like uh, from Devin White and and Deion Jones, those guys or Deion Jones to start, and then Devin and Patrick Queen and even Jacob Phillips, they played special teams and then they became starting middle linebackers and and then day one starters in the NFL. You've kind of now at least gotten to this point of the same path. What did you learn from those guys that that you take into the starting role? Uh, one of the main things I learned from Devin as well as uh, Jacob and PQ was just to, everything's going to come to you. Uh, just to, you know, every, just be patient with everything. Like, don't rush everything because uh, good things come to those that wait. Hey, Damone, uh, congrats on number 18. Um, <clears throat> I was just uh, wondering, just, you know, what have the last, I guess, three weeks been like when you guys are scrimmaging entire stadium? I mean, Coach O has talked about when you guys, you know, trying to create that own energy and, and all that. I mean, just what have you seen and what has been the energy like in those uh, three preseason scrimmages and just kind of tackling and all that? I mean, just how's that gone for you guys? Well, it feels good to be back uh, tackling. I feel like we ain't tackling forever. But um, just, uh, just, you know, like Coach said, we got to create our own energy. You know, right we have 102,000, 25,000, whatever we have, we got to create our own energy. And uh, I like the I like the way our team is moving. You know, uh, one day the, the defense is up, and then the next day the offense is up, and that's how it should be. Hey, Damone, this is Garland Gill in Fox 8 in New Orleans. Um, I keep hearing about how aggressive this defense is. Maybe it's a little different than how it was coached last year. Uh, what do you like about this defense, how it uh, shows your talents? Do you like this aggressive style, kind of spotlights what you can do? Uh, football is aggressive, so, I mean, yeah, I, I like this aggressive defense. You know, the, the, our defensive mentality is here to be here. Hey, Damone. Uh, Brooks Cabino with The Advocate. Um, you know, you were just talking about the defense there. What are the things that you've learned at this inside linebacker position? Because you've had so many roles in the past. Last year you played outside too. What could you tell us about uh, the inside linebacker position for Bo Pelini and what you're expected to do? No, you're the quarterback of the defense. So Coach Pelini put the ball in your hands up to you to, you know, dice it out. So, I mean, just me being a Mike linebacker, you know, I have to – be able to line the front up, know what the back end is doing, and just continue to, just to play fast. Because, I mean, if you know what you're doing, you're going to play fast. If you don't know what you're doing, you're just not going to play fast. Hey, Damone. Amos Morrow, WWL Radio. Uh, just question about your personal goals for this season. Uh, do you have any? And if so, uh, what are they? I mean, my, my – Personal goal is to be the best Damone Clark I can be. You know, a lot of people say, you know, Devin and PQ and Jacob. Nah, I got to be the best Damone Clark I can be. I can't compare myself to what Devin did, PQ did, and Jacob did. Hey, Damone. Jared Roser, TigerDetails.com. Um, congrats again on 18. We've We've obviously seen you out there. We've talked to Jabril. I was wondering your perspective on some of these other linebackers because a lot of you guys are going to have to step up this year, uh, particularly Micah stepping into a much bigger role, uh, but just what you've seen from some of the other guys around you. Oh, uh, well, Micah, like you said, Micah going to have to step in a bigger role. Uh, we believe in Micah. Micah can do it as well as Jabril. And uh, a guy that came along is um, Josh White. Uh, Josh is, you know, has progressed over the days, uh, and I see he getting better every day. Hey, Damone, this is William with uh, Tiger Ride Magazine. How you doing? Good, I'm good. How about you? Uh, there's been a lot of discussion. Coaches addressed, you know, a lot of people's perspective of how what this team is not going to have in 2020 compared to the 2019 team, and, and no position group was hit harder than the linebacker position. Can you? Maybe discuss some of the motivation y'all have as a group to, to try to uphold uh, the play there, and if, just because there's a, new, a lot of new faces there, including yourself as a starter. Are we well? Well, we gonna let people think what they want to think. You know, uh, we know we got, we know we got to do, and we just gonna show everybody what we got to do.
What a do, baby. Uh, that was exciting to hear from your mom, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, just the idea of, of a player's perspective during all of this. How have you managed to maintain your focus and what has helped you? What have you realized that you need to you know, improve upon? Because it's been such a long camp. How have you kind of paced yourself? I mean, all along, I knew we was going to play football. So, I mean, it was all about prepping myself and as well as the team prepping just to play football because, you know, we, we see the stuff that, you know, some people saying, oh, we're going to play, you're not going to play. But, I mean, all along, we've been preparing to play. And, I mean, Saturday we get to finally play. Hey, Damone, I, I guess one thing I'm curious of is just with you and Jabril Cox on the field together, you know, say when it's just you and a nickel, like what are the – responsibilities between you two how does that kind of dynamic go together I mean Jabril and I have a we have a feel for each other so I mean it it's nothing new you know we uh we watch film together uh we we bring out put ourselves through plays together and we just communicate communication breeds confidence so I mean we ain't gonna skip a step hey Jabril uh, congrats again on getting 18. So tell me, how do you how do you like about the change? What's the the best part you liked about switching into Bobolini's defense, and also how has it been preparing for Mississippi State uh, up to this upcoming Saturday? Uh, the change to Coach Bobolini's defense is just like I'm excited to play in this defense. You know, uh, like I said, I'm being the Mike linebacker. I'm the quarterback of the defense, and I mean everything that I ever asked for is just coming. So I mean, I'm I'm glad you know to be in the position that I'm in. You know, and just seeing that Coach Bobolini trusting his linebackers to get everybody to line up. Oh, and also being like being really aggressive. Like I like I like this is aggressive defense, you know. Like I said, it's hit or be hit. This is the SEC, so I mean what you expect. Uh, hey Damone, this is Shay again. Um was just curious since we don't get to see practice what have you seen from the D-line group and maybe specifically guys like Ali Gay who, you know, we haven't gotten a chance to see on the field yet? Oh, uh, well, I see a uh, constant improvement every day with our D-line group as well as our other positions. Um, but our D-line group, you know, guys going to have to step up this year, but that's part of football, uh, next man up, next man mentality. And every day I see they continue to get better each and every day. And uh, for Ali, Ali, the sky's the limit for Ali, man. Ali is a guy that came in. He was quiet. He had his head down. He just was working. Now that his time here, I mean, he, he going to prove it. He going to prove himself. Damone Brooks again from The Advocate. Um, Ed Ogeron said getting a pass rush and getting to the quarterback against Mississippi State is so important this week. Who are the best pass rushers that you've seen at, uh, among you guys, and what makes you – what makes y'all good at what you can do? Do you have different talents, different things? And if you could tell us a little bit about your pass rush. I mean, shoot, I mean, I, I really don't know. We got guys that we got guys that can do it all. But of course, uh, a guy that I've really been impressed with was BJ Angelore. Um, BJ, true freshman coming in. Uh, I, I mean, I, I like BJ. You know, BJ is gonna be a real good talent. You know, each and every day I see BJ. You know, improving every day, competing every day. So, I mean, of course, BJ, as well as Travez Moore, Andre Anthony, and Jarrell Cherry. Uh, Jarrell is a guy that many people don't talk about, but once he get his chance this year, y'all going to be talking about him too. Hey, Damone. Uh, you know, we sort of going back to Jarrell Cox for a second. Ed said when he came in that he barely spoke at all and he was just working. They didn't really hear from him much. Um, what were your first impressions of Jabril when he arrived, and, and how did he sort of solidify himself uh, in that starting role? I mean, I, I've been talking to Jabril before he even got here. So, I mean, when he got here, it was just, all right, it was time for us to work. You know, uh, he we needed help in the linebacker room. Uh, he helped us, and, I mean, it's time now. I mean, I, I'm i just excited, you know, to have Jabril here because he, he's a real talented guy. And he helped me improve my game as well as those that are that he uh hang around to. So we'll wrap up with Damone with three more questions. We'll go Cobble, Dennis, and then Paul. Uh Arik Gilbert is just catching so many headlines. What do you see from a defensive side, uh, a perspective of a guy that's 
new to the school, but but clearly talented and gifted. Arik is he's going to be a, a special player. He he has the ability to be the best tight end to ever play college football. I mean, every day, like I compete with him every day. Guys compete with him every day. And, I mean, we're a team, so he get us better, and we uh, we he get us better, and we get him better. Hey, Damone, I um, wonder if you could compare defending this thing, this championship, as opposed to going for it. What, what's tougher? I mean, we got to take it one game at a time. You know, uh, last year's last year. We don't talk about last year. We're talking about this year, but we take it one game at a time, one step at a time. Hey, Damone, Paul Boron from Cox Sports Television. Uh, I don't know if you've been asked about it yet, but uh, just uh, the honor of being the 18, being a Baton Rouge guy, uh, what does it mean to you? Uh, what, what were your emotions when you heard about it? I mean, I'm, I'm blessed uh, and honored to wear number 18 after so many guys before me has worn it. Um, but, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to wear it. You know, I just thank Coach O, the coaching staff, the supporting staff. I just thank everyone for believing in me to – let me wear 18. It means a lot just being a guy from Louisiana, you know, growing up, watching LSU play, you know, and just envisioning myself walking down Victory Hill and running out the tunnel in front of 102,000. It's really surreal, but I'm really honored. Awesome. Thank you, Devon. Appreciate it. I guess just kind of to start, you know, you guys uh, obviously are preparing for a very tough, you know, pass, pass first offense on, on Saturday. And I was just curious as to, you know, what's been the most challenging part about, you know, studying a Mike Leach offense, you know, with, you know, obviously him being at Washington State last year and just trying to kind of mix and match up all the personnel and, and groupings and stuff now that he's on board at Mississippi State. Uh, the, the thing that's uh, hardest about his offense is that he's going to always put his players in uh, in right spots to uh, make plays. Um, he – he um, evaluates his talent very well and he knows what they can and cannot do and he doesn't ask them he doesn't ask them to do things that they can't do so um, he does a perfect job of drawing up plays and drawing up things to put his players to uh, maximize their potential hey Jacoby it's been a long camp uh, how do you how have you paced yourself and and now that you're at game week, how do you control that energy, you know, for the full 60 minutes? Obviously, it's going to bring your bring your own energy type of environment. So this is going to be so unique, I guess, to anything you've probably ever done in your college game, college mm -hmm. career. Well, I, I think, um, you know, we've been in camp for, we've been in camp for a long time, but uh, I think we're not going to struggle with our own energy for that first game just because it is the first game. I know. Um, you know, I know it's, uh, last year and the year before that, the first game is always the, the biggest game and it's always the game that everybody's excited about. Why? Because it's the first game. So I don't think we're going to struggle with uh, coming out with energy that uh, for that game. And, um, you know, it's also special because we also open up uh, with an SEC West opponent. So there's multiple things that are going to um, allow us or kind of get us ready uh, and hyped up for this game this uh, upcoming Saturday. Hey, Jacoby, uh, there was a lot of talk over the offseason of, uh, of you as a candidate for number 18 and now you're number seven. Uh, just kind of talk about the meaning of number seven to you and I guess somewhat your perspective of both those numbers as an LSU player. Yeah, um, with, no, with number seven, um, the meaning is really great to me. I mean, I, uh, that's one of the reasons why I wore number seven in high school. And when I play AE basketball, I wore number seven. Just um, not only the, what the meaning is, but just um, Patrick Peterson, the things that he did here and, and uh, the way that I looked up to him uh, growing up in high school. And uh, I mean, I really can even say middle school. I mean, that, that's what um, really seven for me, that's what, how uh, deeply rooted I am into that number. And also, like my dad said in an uh, interview a while ago, um, seven is a standard that we hold for our family about being complete, uh, being a, a well-rounded person a well-rounded human being, not only on the field, but off the field. So seven is really just more than, uh, for me, than just making plays on the field. It's uh, about, you know, it's really deeply rooted to me 
of since middle school when uh, when watching Patrick Peterson highlights and um, watching what he did here at LSU, making plays on the field, but also um, what it stands for, the number itself. Um, and with the eight, with the uh, two 18s with Chris and Damone, they couldn't get it. Uh, you know, they did it uh, perfect, perfect choice. I mean, those guys are stand-up guys, they're leaders on the team, and people uh, look to them. Um, they look to them for advice. They look uh, to them on the way to go. Uh, and uh, Coach O uh, did a tremendous job on choosing both Damone and uh, Chris Curry for 18. Yeah, Jacoby, uh, with all of the new pieces that you guys are going to have to work in on defense, does it almost kind of feel like you're on a new team in a sense just because you've had so many guys uh, move on to the next level? Yeah, um, every every year um, every year is a new team. Uh, I mean, we could, be, we could return all 22, but it's always a new team because you can't look at what you did last year because the year is always different. Um, I mean, we have new guys. I mean, yeah, we have new faces coming in, but they've been – here at LSU for, you know, at least two or three years. Um, you know, we, we have to forget, you know, what we did last year. But I, the best thing I can uh, answer that question is every every team, every year, uh, is a new team. Every team, uh, you don't carry a team from uh, one year to the next. Can't do that. Hey, Jacoby, uh, Brooks Kavina from The Advocate. Um, how many defenses does Bo Kalini know and what different things do you find yourself doing on the field on a daily basis? Um, I think Coach Pellini knows just about every defense um, there is. I mean, he, you know, he has his methods. He has his ways of doing things, and he kind of uh, twists and kind of um, edits some of his um, his philosophy to I know, um, to cancel out some of the things that the offense is doing. So his, his uh, knowledge of the game and his IQ level is out of the roof. And um, the things that he has me doing, has other guys doing, is, is some things that, I, you know, I'm learning myself. I mean, I, I, I uh, you know, try to credit myself on knowing the, knowing the game and being a student of the game, but I'm constantly learning under Coach Polini every single day. Hey, Jacoby. I, you know, obviously Derek Stingley had, you know, such a breakout year last year. I'm curious, I mean, one, where does like how how can he even get better? I guess what are the things that he can still grow at, and what have you seen from him these past you know nine months or so? Right, um, there's always room to get better. Um, you, you know, at the end of the day, you, you know, no one can be a perfect player, and with Derek, he knows that, and and, that, and that's the thing I've seen most from him is that his hunger and drive to get better. He knows that he's uh, he he knows that he's not where he wants to be. I mean, he's still great. I feel like he's still the best corner in the uh, country. And I think everybody else here feels that uh, about him as well. But that's one thing about Derek that I love seeing about him, that, he, that he's not complacent and he's going to keep uh, pushing to uh, be the best corner, uh, not only in college football, but I mean, maybe a year from now, two years from now in the NFL. Hey, Jacoby, uh, So after seeing how this weekend went um, with the NFL, they had a ton of injuries happening. Do you all have any concerns due to the lack of training that y'all received due to COVID-19 and how that might carry over for the season? Um, no, because I think we have uh, confidence in our uh, strength and conditioning staff with Coach Moffitt, uh, Moffitt Vic, uh, with our training staff with uh, Mickey and uh, Gabby. Uh, we have uh, total confidence on what they've uh, what they've been doing with us and how they've been preparing us for the game. I mean, uh, injuries happen. Um, you can't, you know, you, when you sign up to play football, that's one of the things that you have, uh, that you have to know. That's what you're getting yourself into. But um, I, uh, I, I f uh, have 100 percent confidence in what Coach Moffitt, uh, how he had us lift, um, and how we go into recovery with Mickey and Gabby and. Um, also, how Coach O uh, had us practice. We practiced like it was a game day every uh, Friday because we had our scrimmages on Friday. So uh, that's how we practice, and that's when we uh, and that's how we scrimmage. Like every day, uh, every week was a game week. Hey, Jacoby Garland Gill in Fox State in New Orleans. Uh, you had numerous uh, practices and scrimmages going up against Miles Brennan. Uh, is there anything that kind of stands out that we don't see or 
Mm. Uh, I know Coach O said he has better velocity on the ball than Burrow does, but what, what's kind of give us a window into what you've seen going against them uh, this summer? Uh, that's definitely one of the uh, strengths that um, I think Miles has is his uh, arm strength. Uh, I, you know, he, uh, um, there's a reason why he broke all those records in Mississippi. I mean, he can place the ball really uh, down the field, and um, Miles really does have a rocket for our arm. But I think one of the things that's going to surprise a lot of you is that his confidence in the pocket and his confidence in running the offense. I mean, a lot of people say, you know, he didn't, he doesn't have a lot of experience and all that stuff like that. But how he carries himself in the pocket, how he carries himself as the quarterback uh, for LSU, you would be able to tell that he sat behind Joe Burrow or Danny Etling his freshman year. In the safety room with the other guys, Todd and and Cam coming back and Mo, and then bringing in Jordan Tolls, kind of how do you sum up that room? What are some of the strengths of, of those other guys? And mm. and um, kind of how do y'all feed off each other in, in terms of what one guy does well and versus another? Right. Uh, I think I think what's different about this room right here is that everybody's everybody's uh, trying to be a student of the game. Everybody's taking notes in the in the meeting room. Everybody wants to know what everybody else is doing. Uh, we want to play off each other. We want to uh, hide each other's weaknesses. And, and and that's the best thing about this room this year is that everybody is bought in and everybody's a student of the game. Um, that's one thing that we stress in the safety room is taking notes and being students of the game. And, and, I, and I'm very proud of Mo uh, Jordan's coming along and Todd and uh, Cam that we're, we're actually becoming students of the game this year. Hey, Jacoby, uh, Coach Show has said a lot during camp about, you know, how much better the defense has been. Well, how would you compare it going into week one this year than it was last year? And is, is there a position group you're excited to perform this weekend? Um, a group that I'm excited uh, to see is the, uh, just the D-line. Uh, I feel like they were uh, basically just unleashing the D-line uh, this year. I know in the 3-4 we kind of held them in a box. But um, I think this year we're really unleashing them and, uh, and basically kind of seeing what they can do. Um, but I think we're light years ahead of where we were last year, uh, defensive wise. I think we're going in with a lot, with a lot of less questions, um, and I'm just excited to see, like I said, the D line do uh, what I know and I feel like they can do uh, this Saturday. Yeah. Hey. Hey, Jacoby, Doug Mouton at WWL TV in New Orleans. I'm guessing you've gone against Eric Gilbert a bunch in practice. Mm -hmm. um, is he as good as as we hear? What's your mm -hmm. review of him right now? Uh, I think that um, Eric is a really good tight end. I, th I think he's uh, very special. And um, that's the thing about coming to LSU. You're not going to see a lot of guys like that running around at 6'4", 250. And Eric is not going to see a lot of guys that are 6'1", 220 runner, they can cover him. So I, I think uh, Eric is very special, and I think that he's going to be a, very, uh, a great breakout player. And um, I, I think that um, he's going to live up to the expectation that not only that I have on him, but what uh, Coach O and LSU fans have for him too as well. Hey, Jacoby. Um, it's a, a philosophical question. How likely is it for a, a defensive back to be considered the best defensive player in the country? Obviously, I'm referring to Derek, but I'm talking about you. I'm talking about Grant. You know, Dion just got a job at Jackson State. What are the, what's the likelihood of that in today's day and age? Well, um, I know back then, you know, DBs has kind of got the a stigma of all they do is just backpedal and break up balls, and that's it. Uh, when you see uh, in today's uh, game, uh, DBs, especially safeties, are asked to do so much. Um, it's almost kind of like in the predicament I am in where you don't even know where to label him as. You don't know to label him as a strong safety, a linebacker, or a free safety because, you know, they ask safety to just come in the box and make tackles like a linebacker. They ask him to play man-to-man -man on a, a tight end, and some they ask to play man-to-man -man on a receiver. And then they ask you to go in the post and, cover, uh, and uh, shut down the uh, thirds of the field or half of the field, a quarter of the field. So um, I, I feel like um, in today's game, uh, those safeties that are asked to do that uh, can and and uh, more often than not are the best defensive players in the country because of the uh, workload and the job description they're given. 
Miles, if I could, I wanted to ask you about two of your wide receivers, um, Gracie McMath and the uh, the big play ability um, that he has. I know you two hooked up on a big play against A and M last year, and and also John Trey Kirkland. Um, not only what he could possibly bring to the field, but it seems like he's such a likable guy, uh, team camaraderie. It seems like people gravitate to him, and, which is always good for team chemistry. Can you talk about those two guys for us? Yeah, I mean, both of those guys work really hard. Uh, I mean, they've been in here. We, we, we came in the same class, um, and, you know, those are kind of my guys. You know, those are just the guys that were the receivers in, my, in the 2017 class, um, and they both they come to work every single day, um, giving it 100%. And you know about Racy. I mean, he's a big body. He's very physical, um, but he has he has speed, um, and so I think that's a, an testament to him. Um, and John Trey, like you said, I mean, he's he's a very hardworking kid. Um, he is very likable. He's very friendly, um, and he and he comes to work every day. Uh, and he's waiting for his opportunity to to go out there and prove himself. Hey, Miles. Uh <clears throat> At least st statistically, you're following the best there ever was in a season. What what's that like? I mean, it doesn't, <clears throat> it doesn't change anything for me. Um, you know, Joe came in here and he did his thing, and um, what he did was great. And uh, you know, it's it's my turn now to to do my thing and, and write my own story. So, um, you know, I learned a lot from Joe, and and I took things that he did well and, and I, I use them for to better myself um, you know but but the past is the past and, and I'm looking forward to, to, to being able to play this season and, and on Saturday. Hey Miles, Ron Higgins, Tiger Rag. Uh, you've waited a long time to get your shot to start and here it is. Saturday as you run out, how do you I guess put in perspective and, and, and stay calm and, and not you know not get so hyped? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's going to be another game. You know, this is my, uh, it's my fourth season here. Uh, you know, I've run out into Tiger Stadium a, a good number of times. Um, and, and just because I'm the starter, you know, nothing's going to change. Uh, you know, I'm still preparing like I would have prepared the past three years as, as if I was the starter. Um, and, you know, it just, now I'm going to be able to be that guy that runs out in the field first. Um, but other than that, nothing's really going to change. My preparation and the way I'm, I'm, I'm going to go into the game, uh, you know, I'm going to be my calm, cool, collective self. Hey, Miles, uh, from lifting trees in Mississippi this off season to getting back here, um, your, your family, you've had a long journey to get to this point. Um, what are your parents, how are they feeling about this week there? Owen, have you talked to them, texted them? What, what is the feeling among the family, your brothers, uh, that they're going to see their their, their brother and their son uh, go play Tiger Stadium on Saturday. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, my, my, my parents and my brothers and my family, you know, that's really been, you know, my biggest support staff up until this point. Uh, you know, they've been, they've sacrificed a lot and they've been, I wouldn't be here without them, obviously. Um, but, you know, they, they traveled every single game, home and away. Um, and so they're always there supporting me. So, you know, this is, it's exciting for me to be able to give this back to them, you know, because this is what they've been waiting for. And it's obviously what I've been waiting for as well. But, you know, to, to, to be able to go out there and perform for them and, and, you know, make them feel proud is what I'm most looking forward to. Hey, Miles Brooks, Keenan from The Advocate. Um, you probably haven't taken many hits this offseason, but Ed Ogeron's talked about some of the sacks and um, preseason games. Who from the defense, we've talked about pass rush about them, and I'm just curious from your perspective, who have you seen that's done well from the defensive side as well as getting to the quarterback? Yeah, I'd say the two biggest ones, or three really, would be BJ, Ali, and Trevez Moore. I mean, those guys have, like, I mean, they come to work every single day, um, and those are three very aggressive pass rushers that we have, um, and I think they're all going to see valuable playing time this season. Um, you know, they work really hard, they're coachable, um, and they enjoy getting after the quarterback, so I think they're looking forward to Saturday. Hey, Miles, Jared Roser, Tiger Details. Um, for, I guess, a team and a fan base fresh off the highest highs and now so much turnover and new faces but obviously a ton of talent what is the process like of kind of balancing 
huge expectations yet again, but also some patience for so many freshmen and, and so forth? Yeah, I mean, we just got to take it a week at a time. Um, you know, we, like you said, we have a bunch of fresh faces. Um, a, a lot of guys that, as Coach Alexis say, haven't been in the fire yet. Um, and, and it's gonna, you know, we're gonna have to learn and, and develop week by week. Uh, we have a lot of talent on offense, defense, and special teams, um, you know, but we're relatively young um, in terms of experience. Um, but, you know, that's not gonna stop us. Uh, you know, we're gonna take it a day at a time, really, and we're gonna take it a game at a time, and we're gonna just learn and build each week. And so I think, we're, you know, we're gonna be just fine. and you know your offense skill players to be on the same page timing wise with no spring and how funky the summer was kind of what was the last month like for you with Jamar kind of going out midway um, you know finding that balance and, and getting everything you need in order to, to be the starter I mean you know Jamar did his thing um, and you know that we didn't really blink, you know, with that. It, you know, he made that decision for himself. Um, but and, and we still had to stay focused and, and get ready to play a game, you know, coming this Saturday. Um, you know, as an offense and receiving core and running backs, uh, the biggest thing that we really focused on was just getting our timing down, like you said, um, and whether that's before practice and you know, every every day since camp started after practice, uh, we stay, you know, 15, 20, even sometimes 30 minutes and just go over routes that we maybe missed during practice or routes that they want to, you know, that we need to work on timing wise um, or just talk through things. Um, and so I think that's really been beneficial since we've lost spring um, and, and this off season was, is, is a lot different than what it usually is. Hey Miles, uh, I got kind of a two parter here for you. I mean, uh, you know, obviously Eric and Terrace, they get a lot of the kind of praise, you know, I guess this whole off season. Uh, but maybe can you just tell us kind of who is a surprise player in the backfield or a receiver or a tight end that you feel like is really going to, you know, explode this season? And then also just, you know, with the running back being a huge part of the passing game, who were some running backs that you have really built that chemistry with in the backfield and getting, you know, and used to the passing game? Yeah, I mean, our whole receiver, I mean, I'll start with the receivers. I know our receiving core, uh, you know, it'd be hard just to pick one, you know, but I, the one that I, you know, is, it would be Kayshawn, you know, just because, I mean, he's come in here as a freshman um, and he's taken over, uh, you know, that starting spot. Um, and, and he's come to work since day one. You know, he, he never missed a Saturday morning throwing session um, or a film study session. I mean, he was always there. Um, and, you know, obviously, you know, that goes a long way. Um, and I, I think all our receivers are going to be standouts and they're all going to make big plays for us um, at different, you know, parts of the game. Um, and in the running back room, you know, I feel very confident where we are at, where, where we are at right now. Um, obviously, you know, with Chris and Ty and John, three very powerful running backs. Um, they all do different things, um, you know, but we're going to be able to use what they do um, in this offense. And they're going to be three very successful backs in our offense. Hey, Miles. Uh, Amos Morale from WWL Radio. Um, regarding, you kind of touched on Terrace a little bit, but just where have you seen him kind of make some strides? Uh, in, you know, obviously the expectation is that he's going to be the top guy. Uh, what about him kind of makes him such a, a, you know, a big target for you? Yeah, I mean, he's just always eager, uh, you know, to learn and to get better. Um, you know, I mean, He's made a bunch of plays in camp, um, you know, but he's the first one, you know, after practice coming and, and saying that, you know, he needs X, Y, and Z routes to get, you know, that he, need, he wants to work on. Um, and, you know, he's, he's fast, he's physical, uh, and he's going to go up and he's going to catch the ball. Um, and, you know, I think that's the most important thing is, is that he's going to use his body and take advantage of, of his size, um, and he's going to make sure he comes down with that ball. Hey Miles, I guess now that you've had you know a month or so of camp. I mean, where do you think that offensive line is at? I guess what are some strengths of that offensive line, and also what are some things you guys are still kind of working on? Yeah, I mean our our offensive line has had a tremendous camp. Um, you know they've they picked up our our um, our new defense. You know when we were going against ourselves in camp, uh, they picked that up really well. And now preparing for Mississippi State. Uh, you know Mississippi State does a lot of, of stunts and games on the line, um, and. And they've handled it really well. Uh, I feel very comfortable with those guys. Uh, you know, they come, they work really hard. Coach Craig gets them ready every single day, um, and, and they're ready. You know, I don't think there are as many weaknesses with, with that with that group. 
um, you know, they're always ready to learn, uh, and, and I'm excited to, to see how they do on Saturday. Miles, if you had to guess, will it be tougher to replicate what Joe did physically or the intangibles with the leadership he brought to the team? And a, a second part, was there a moment during last year that you realized he really is going to win the Heisman and that could complicate following him or make it tougher? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not really worried about you know, making sure I do what Joe did, you know, and, and making sure that I'm, you know, throwing as many touchdowns or breaking the records that he did. Uh, you know, I'm Miles Brennan, and, uh, you know, I'm not worried about what he did, and, and I'm not going to be following in his footsteps, you know, because it's it's time for me to take my own path and write my own story, like I said. Um, but obviously, you know, Joe, last year, the season he had was, was tremendous, um, and there's a countless number of plays, you know, that that I could think of that maybe set his mark for the Heisman, um, and you know, his I think his play took care of t took care of itself, um, and so he, you know, I don't think he was worried about the Heisman, uh, you know, like I said, it, him going out there and performing on Saturday, uh, I think the results took care of itself. Well, with the last four on here, I don't know if Dennis is in there, but if not, we'll go Cobble. Hey, what up, Miles? Uh, Michael Cobble at Channel 2 here in Baton Rouge. Um, we talked at the in Atlanta, you know, about you having your shot, and so much has happened to you. You talked about the coaches that you've had kind of roll through here. Um, two questions. Was there ever any doubt um, that you would get to this point? And then secondly, we've all seen your arm strength. What are some of the personal strengths that you feel you bring to the field, and what have you really tried to button up now that you know it is going to be your turn. Yeah, well, with the first one, uh, no, I, I never had any doubt that I would get to where I am today. Um, you know, that's why I'm still here. And when I came in as a freshman, my, my goal was to be the starter. Um, and I worked every single day. Um, and, you know, I was denied that for the first three years. Um, but, you know, I was going to let adversity get in my way and, and stop me from achieving my dream. Um, and so here I am today. Um, and you know, I, like you said, I mean, I, I think I do have a, a you know a strong arm, um, but you know, just the leadership and being able to extend plays on my feet um, and, and keep the guys upbeat, um, you know, I think that's that's really important at the quarterback position because everybody's looking at at the quarterback to to rely on, you know. And so, obviously, there's going to be bad things that happen throughout the game, um, but we need to have a, a one play mindset, as I as I like to think about it, um, good, bad, or indifferent. You know, we need to move on to the next play and, and be ready. Hey, Miles, Matt Trent, Channel 2 here in Baton Rouge. Um, Coach O said yesterday that Joe got to the point where he had a lot of input in this offense and would go to Coach and say, hey, I want to run this or I don't want to run that. And he said, right now, you're kind of yes, sir, no, sir, and just doing your job. Do you think that at any point this season you get to that point where you feel confident enough to have input and a say on what – want to run versus what you don't want to run in this offense? 100 percent yeah I mean I uh, I meet with coach Linehan and you know we go over the uh, the game plan and, and we talk about the passing game each week um, and, it, and you know it's funny coach Insmere called me Saturday night uh, and we were talking about you know things that that we saw on film and things that I liked um, and what I didn't like and, and I had some input and in, uh, on some new routes um, and today we put those routes in so you know I, I think uh, you know this is the start um, and, you know, I'm excited to, to see where this offense can go. Hey, Miles. Um, when it comes to Mississippi State, obviously they've got a new coach and you guys have a lot of new personnel. But um, how much do you look at last year's game? You're standing there on the sideline watching. It seemed like last year, maybe early on, the red zone, uh, it was, there was some trouble scoring in the red zone against those guys. Um, what would what, you take away from just watching that game last year and then playing them this year? Yeah, I mean, Mississippi State, uh, you know, it seems like they're always going to give us their best game. Um, and, you know, they're going to come out and, and they're a physical team and they're well coached. Um, obviously, they have a new head coach and a new defensive coordinator. Um, so, we, you know, their defense coordinator is from San Diego State. So we've been watching a bunch of San Diego State film um, along with, you know, Mississippi State film to get personnel-wise. Um, but 
know, we're going to have to come out and we're going to have to play our best game, and that's going to be every week, um, you know, but I, I feel like we're, we're excited and we're ready to go. Okay, if Dennis isn't in there, we'll let Miles go. Appreciate your time, Miles. All righty. Hey, Chris, Scott Rabelais from The Advocate. Uh, we all remember uh, your performance last year in the Peach Bowl. Take us through this offseason or preseason with, with only a couple of spring practices and then you know, going into the fall and so many running backs. Have there been a, has there been a chance for any of you guys to really stand out? Or, you know, Coach talked about, you know, having four, maybe five running backs who carry the ball. Is it, it Do you foresee it being that kind of situation most of the season? Uh, I feel like whoever gets in the game, they're going to be prepared. Uh, everybody prepared like they're the starter. Yeah, Chris, Ron Higgins, Tiger Rag Magazine. What turned it around for you last year? Obviously, it had been a great game against Oklahoma, but what, what turned it around? What, what kept you from not, I guess, getting depressed because you were so far down the depth chart? What, what kept you going and what turned it around? Uh, what kept me going is uh, my family, uh, talking to them every day, uh, the coaching staff. You know, they keep me motivated. And just looking back at my community, uh, just setting an example for the kids, just showing them uh, no matter how hard it gets, don't quit on your dreams. and uh, You got to fight for what you want. Again, coached by Kevin Falk. Can you repeat that? Uh, what's it like being coached by Kevin Falk? Oh, man, uh, Kevin Falk is a legend uh, in the NFL. You can see what he does in the NFL and just here. Uh, it's an amazing uh, tool. He's amazing. Uh, just saying, like, what he brings to the table for us, because we were better at pass blocking, we're better at catching, at route running. Uh, even just, he just, he's just everything to us, like a father figure a big brother figure and everything. So anything we need, we feel comfortable talking to him about anything. Hey, Chris, Jarrett Roser, Tiger Details. Um, when you look at kind of the lead up to each season that you've been at LSU and there was some, you know, some new faces in 2018, 2019, you kind of carried over a lot from the end of that 18 season and now a lot of turnover again. Can you kind of compare and contrast sort of the lead up to the seasons and, and expectations versus um, excitement to prove yourselves and, and things like that? Uh, every year we have, we set goals for each other. Uh, every room, they, like we set goals for what we want to accomplish. And of course, everybody wants to win a national championship. So we have to jail together. Hey, Chris, this is Mallory from LSU Tiger TV. I know that every night, every Saturday night in Tiger Stadium, the atmosphere is electric. And I just wanted to get your opinion, a few thoughts on how you think that might affect the game this Saturday, if that is going to affect the team's play, or just how you all feel going into the game with the lack of fans and just different atmosphere for this season. Uh, we feel like we create our own energy. You know, we love the fans and stuff, but we have to focus in. Like, if we make a big play, the crowd's going to go crazy, but we still have to make those plays without the, without, without the fans. Just knowing the fans are at home supporting us means everything. Amos Morale from uh, WWL Radio. Uh, you mentioned kind of how all of you guys in the running back room kind of prepare as if you're going to be the starter. Uh, is there that kind of internal competition? Is there, a, you know, like, I'm going to get, you know, touchdowns this game or I'm going to get the most yards. Is there some kind of competition you guys have between each other? Oh, uh, yeah, we try to compete with each other, try to push each other every day in practice. You know, we, we just want to see the best out of everybody and within each other. Hey, Chris, Glenn Gilbert, USA Today, Louisiana. Um, how, how close did you come to transferring and and were you thinking about um, another school or two, or did it, did it get that far in number two? Um, oh, no. Transfer has never crossed my mind. Oh, uh, when you're in town. Sir, can you repeat that again? 
You was kind of bringing up. Um, first off, um, how close did you come to transferring, and were you thinking about a school or two? Uh, no, sir. Transferring has never crossed my mind. Uh, like I said before, like if you want something bad enough, you're willing to fight for it. And the second question, how important is it, is, is it to you to play well for your hometown and friends and family back home? Uh, it means a lot, just knowing what my community has been through. And I feel like coming from that, I have to prove everything. Like I'm, I have that on my shoulders. Hey, Chris, this is uh, Glenn West with LSU SI. Um, I was just kind of curious, you know, obviously with, with you and, and, and John and uh, uh, Terry, and, you know, you guys are going to be sharing a lot of the duties, you know, not just in the rushing game, but also with the passing attack as well. I'm curious to see what y'all's chemistry is like with, with Miles, you know, heading into Saturday and just kind of how you guys have developed uh, maybe that, uh, you know, from a passing perspective as, as well as a rushing perspective. Uh, I mean, it's a brotherhood, you know. Like, we be in practice, everybody run with the ones, the twos, and the threes. So everybody's really get every rep. Uh, hey, uh, uh, this is Garland Gillen with Fox 8 New Orleans. Is there something with the other two running backs with Emery and, and Ty Davis-Price that, um, you know, there's something off the field that, that y'all kind of have a synergy together? Or is there anything that kind of stands out in your relationship on or off the field? Um, like I said, uh, no matter what time it is at night, we're brothers. Like, if you need something, we're willing to do anything for each other. Uh, I know every Sunday we go to Kevin, Kevin Falk's house and we eat dinner just to build that chemistry with each other. I feel like that's very important. Hey, Chris, Brooks Cabina with The Advocate. Uh, we, we talked last year after the Oklahoma game, and you were you were saying that on the sideline, you didn't know until Ed Ogeron said, okay, go in, and you had that game. Now, I mean, he says you're probably likely the first back to be in. I mean, you probably had a lot more time to think about it than you did in that Oklahoma game. What What's going through your mind about Saturday's game where are you visualizing things to a point where you're doing well enough to where they, you know, you establish yourself as the guy that they want to give the hot hand to? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, this coming from the bottom of depth chart and prove, like have to prove myself. I feel like I have to prove myself this game in every game, but I take it one game at a time. I mean, yeah, we've talked so much about how you know you put your head down, got to work, proved the staff wrong, and all that. But just you know, football wise, I mean, what do you think? You know, in the past year, you've actually improved on. Where do you think you've gotten better in all that time? Becoming a man, becoming a young man, uh, becoming a better leader. Uh, you know, coming in as a freshman and sophomore, you're kind of immature, but being through those situations, it helps you mature and grow. Hey, Chris, this is uh, Josh Stibley with Louisiana Great Iron Football. Uh, Coach O believes you guys might have actually a better running back situation than last year. Um, taking over the reins for uh, for Clyde. What is the running back uh, room like this year with you guys? Versatile. We have speed, power, we have vision, we're just smart all around. Hey, Chris, and you guys have, of course, a lot of new faces on offense, but you know who do you think really has stood out and is really surprise people on game day? Uh, everybody, anybody that touched the field, I feel like they're going to gonna have their shot to prove themselves. Hey, Chris, uh, Jacques Doucet from WAFB-TV here in Baton Rouge. Uh, had the opportunity to speak to your high school coach and your strength and conditioning coach over the summer. Uh, seemed like some really great guys and very proud of you. Um, they speak about your work ethic, that you just had this burning desire to work. Even the day you signed, you didn't want to go party. You wanted to go straight to the weight room. Um, can you just speak about that? Where does that come from? Where does your burning desire come from? Uh, my grandfather, uh, like growing up with him, uh, he always told me, if you work hard, you're going to end up getting what you want at the end of the day. So no matter what time it is, no matter how many 110s, no matter how early, no matter if I'm tired, hurting, I'm, I'm just going to go to work with my head down. 
I guess we'll wrap up with Cobble and his son for today. What's going on? We're doing Hi. math homework over here. So That's what's up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I guess maybe your story is better known to, to others than to me, but to, to me, it was the recommendation of Joe Burrow, you know, saying this is the guy that I wanted in this situation that really catapulted you to the top. I mean, could you talk about that moment, how you seize that moment, and now how you plan to capitalize on that moment going forward? Oh man, this that moment was very special. It was very heartwarming, uh, very touching. You know, just coming from Joe Burrow. I mean, you talking about a guy that won Heisman, the guy that got first pick in the draft. Just having him speak up for you, that mean that speaks value. Uh, you know, just going coming into the season, you know, like I said before, I have something to prove every game. And I'm very hungry. So I'm very determined to, you know, run for Heisman if not win Heisman. This year. Thank you, Chris. You well. Everyone good? Yeah, I was just going to ask as a follow up what is it that you thought Joe saw in you, and what is it that you try to, to show now? Uh, hard working. You know, I never complained about anything. Uh, I did special teams. You know, just a hard working person. And I felt like he felt that. That deserved to get rewarded. I'll add one more, Chris. All right. Hey, Chris, Paul Boron from CST. Uh, I just want to ask about the 18 and uh, what you thought about that. Oh, man. I almost cried. It was very emotional. Like, I almost cried because I had no idea that that was coming. Uh, just knowing the history of 18 and what it means to the team and what it means to the state. Uh, I have that riding on my back. So, and I'm. Proud to have 18, and I would do anything for the team.